On the first day of 2015, we look back at 2014. There are more stories about autism in 2014 than ever before due to increasing research, diagnoses, government initiatives, and non-governmental organizations dedicated to autism. And many people believe there are simply more people on the spectrum than ever before. In 2001, only Indiana mandated autism treatment as part of insurance coverage. Autism Speaks is very active advocating for mandatory insurance coverage and tracks inclusion state by state. Last year, Kansas, Maine, Nebraska, Maryland, Utah, and the U.S. Virgin Islands added or modified its mandated coverage of autism therapy. This brings to 40, the number of states and territories that mandate autism insurance treatment. 2014 saw advancement in the ability of more parents to find treatment for their children. It was a banner year for studies, though the studies sometimes raised more questions than they answered. Carl Nubio covers science and research, and he's here with a recap of the year. Carl? Thank you, Nancy. The importance of autism is very often judged by the number of people affected by it. And that's why the prevalence of autism report is so important to nearly everyone involved with the disorder. This past year, the report was issued by the CDC on March 28th. Autism prevalence in the U.S. is measured by the number of eight-year-old children diagnosed with it. The thinking is, by eight years of age, a child will have shown symptoms long enough that they likely have been diagnosed. Compiling the data also takes quite a while. So the prevalence report issued last year actually measures the number of children with the disorder in 2010. Now that number was a new high, one in 68 children. But again, that's the official figure for 2010. There's good reason to think the upcoming 2015 report will show an equally dramatic increase reporting incidents for 2011. A less accurate phone survey suggests the current number is more like one in 50. This was the best year yet for autism research because more agencies and non-governmental organizations are sponsoring it. The current estimate is the National Institutes of Health spent $190 million on autism research last year and an additional $3.6 billion for behavior and social science research in general. One and a half billion has been spent by the CDC and NIH on autism issues over the last five years. Now, these numbers don't include research grants from organizations like the Autism Research Institutes, INSAR, the Organization for Autism Research, and Autism Speaks. In August, a researcher trying to invalidate the conclusions of a research paper claiming no connection between the MMR vaccine and autism embarrassed the CDC and one of its senior scientists. CDC epidemiologist William Thompson who had participated in many studies on vaccines and autism, was forced to admit that relevant data had been omitted from one study that would have shown a higher incidence of autism in African-American males receiving the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine. He lawyered up and has refused further comment. Hundreds of autism studies were published last year, far more than we can report in our 2014 recap, but here are a few of the more interesting and groundbreaking. A very large study suggested higher rates of autism in children born to mothers subjected to high levels of particulate air pollution during pregnancy. Mothers exposed to the highest levels of pollution during pregnancy were twice as likely to bear autistic children as those exposed to the lowest levels. Another paper, this one from Princeton, indicates an injury to the cerebellum of an unborn or recently born child has a very high correlation with a later diagnosis of autism and research based on autopsies of autistic children's brains versus a control group indicates a marked difference in the prenatal development of the autistic brain. And a genetic study discovered a particular genetic abnormality that leads to an autism diagnosis in about 1% of children with autism. But what's significant here is it also found that the physical characteristics and health issues of these children were all similar. This suggests we may one day describe distinctive types of autism, which may lead to specialized treatments and therapies. There were also several studies this year concentrating on autoimmune disorders in autistic children. One of them indicated autoimmune antibodies in autistic children were as much as 40% higher than in the non-autistic control group. 
It was a very good year for autism research, Nancy, but in some ways we've ended the year with more questions than we started with. And most of these studies are preliminary, and lots more research needs to be done before any can be considered final. Thank you, Carl. When we return, a look at the news stories that caught the attention of mass media in 2014. I'm Nancy Quinones, and this is the Autism World News for New Year's Day, 2015. We'll be right back. With each year, the mass media spends more time talking about autism, whether it be through scripted shows like Parenthood or through news stories about autistic kids, adults, their families, and caregivers. This past year, three classes of stories were reported again and again. Carl Newbill has already told us about the first, government funding and research. Francisco Urena has details on the second. Francisco? Many children with autism elope. That is, they run away with no understanding of how to get home again or the dangers they face. These elopements often weren't considered particularly newsworthy by local broadcasters and newspapers in the past. But this year saw a change in that with the disappearance of and search for Avante Okendo. When the 14th year old walked out of his special school near the waterfront in Queens on October 9th of 2013, that school and parents thought he'd be discovered rather quickly. He had no history of running away, and he liked trains, so initial searches were in the subway stations. But the story continued, as the search continued for months, but in early 2014, his body was discovered on the shoreline of the East River. The national notoriety of the Okendo case prompted the federal government to announce on January 29th that funds set aside for tracking devices for people with Alzheimer's would now also be available for people with autism at risk for elopement. The Autism Channel has covered devices like this, like those offered by Project Lifesaver since our beginning. Daniel Heinlein talked with Gene Saunders about the program in an I Am Autistic episode in 2013. Hi, I'm Dan Heinlein, host of I Am Autistic, and in my hands here, and in the hands of Chief Gene Saunders, we have a device called the PAL. It's the Protect and Locate. And if you have a child on the spectrum who is wandering or loping, this is a device you need to have. Tell us more about it, Gene. Well, Dan, this is the newest technology Project Lifesaver has come out with, and it incorporates several different technologies, including GPS and the radio frequency. Wow, it's comprehensive. Uh, very much so. It'll give you the GPS location of a subject wearing your, the wristwatch here, mm -hmm. but it will also set up an RF perimeter, which if the person goes outside of a distance you set, it gives you an alarm on the device with a red light flashing and a shrill pinging to give you a, uh, an immediate attention. So you can spring into action. Oh, yes, sir. And that's, a, that's a very, very important when you're dealing with somebody that wanders. And it's very easy to get it. It's $99.99. $46 a month. You can go to our website, Project Lifesaver International or projectlifesaver.org. Click on the PAL link. It'll take you straight to it. You can order one through there, or you can call us at 757-546-5502. All right, and take it from Chief Gene Saunders, never go anywhere without a PAL. The program is an I Am Autistic episode 14th, available on the Autism Channel. 
The Avanteo Kendall story also taught the public that running away is a real danger for kids on the spectrum, a fact several studies had indicated was a problem for 49% of spectrum kids just a year before. It is believed that children on the spectrum are attracted by the outdoors in general, plus their attraction to water is often an issue. Eloping autistic kids have be now become a common story to receive local and even national attention. Just last week, the Christmas Eve disappearance of four-year-old Jaden Morrison became national news. That case, too, ended tragically when his body was discovered in a nearby pond. Nancy? Thank you, Francisco. Finally, 2014 was a watershed year for a relatively new movement. With that story, Tim Yancey. Tim? Nancy, that new movement is the autism rights movement. Autism self-advocacy groups trace their history to the disability rights movement of the late 1900s. And self-advocacy certainly goes back to the 1980s when Temple Grandin spoke to the Autism Society. But this year saw a couple of major changes. On October 28th, five members of Congress sent a letter to the heads of Health and Human Services and the National Institutes of Health with a radical proposal. The idea that people on the spectrum be included in all the organizations, committees, and bureaus that deliberate autism policy and programs. The letter read in part, autistic individuals should have a voice in federal policy deliberations impacting their lives. 2014 was also a year of disturbing stories and misinformation. On May 23rd in Isla Vista, California, Elliot Roger killed six people and injured 13 others before committing suicide. Though it appears he never had an official diagnosis, though we aren't sure, he was described by a family spokesperson as having high functioning autism. This intensified the misperception of a link between autism and violent behavior that began with the Sandy Hook shootings, though most media correctly reported there is no link. Autism self-advocacy and the dedication to the worth of all individuals increased in a year that also saw an upturn in reports of bullying and violence. Many of these incidents received wide media coverage, sometimes changing the official response of authorities. One such change came in Okeechobee, Florida, where a video of a 16-year-old boy with autism being beaten went viral, resulting in charges being filed. In Ohio, video of abuse of an autistic boy defiled by an ice bucket challenge went viral as well, resulting in charges being filed against five teens there. But the worst of 2014 were the several stories of murder or attempted murder of autistic children by their parents, by no means a new occurrence. The most uplifting of the year, probably the many stories on social media of random acts of kindness and understanding, like the mother thanking the stranger seated next to her autistic daughter on the plane, who understood and treated the child and the mother with respect. The biggest victory for self-advocacy the passage of the ABLE Act. ABLE stands for Achieving Better Life Experience, and it ended the requirement that disabled people have no significant savings before they can receive any significant government benefits like Medicaid or SSI. The change to the law passed with bipartisan support and was signed by President Obama as one of his last acts of the year before leaving on his Christmas vacation. Nancy? Thanks, Tim. As we've seen, the big story of 2014 is how much everything surrounding autism has grown this past year, and the expectation that this trend will continue in 2015. On this, our first newscast, we'd like to share with you why we hope you'll join us every day, Monday through Friday. First and foremost, we want to earn your trust. There are many contentious issues affecting this community and too many sources promoting their own agenda. The Autism Channel is independent, and the Autism Channel World News intends to report stories objectively and without preference for particular treatment options, causation theories, support organizations, and fundraising groups. This is part of the Autism Channel's mission statement, which is especially important for our news programming. We promise to treat each person with autism, a spectrum disorder, or developmental disability as a unique individual worthy of respect and equal treatment, 
even when the equal treatment may require unequal allocation of resources. We know, too, that while there are several people with ASDs involved in the production of this program, we are mostly neurotypicals talking about people with autism. As we grow, we'll seek out people on the spectrum to join our news team. We also know we won't always make everybody happy. When you do that in journalism, you're probably not doing your job. Our job, in our humble opinion, is to help people be more informed about a subject that has seen far too little attention for its growing incident in a fast-changing world. I'm Nancy Quinones. For our news team and everyone at the Autism Channel, join us again as we unlock the wonders of autism. See you next time.